Anderson. I go by Technology Online, and I'm the animated GIF, GIF artist at GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> also write Ruby sometimes, but mostly animated GIFs. Um, I'm also sort of getting into uh, DJing a little bit. Uh, Kyle mentioned the uh, kegerator that we have in our office, and uh, every time we've had like kind of like a private um, office party, there's been uh, Tom and me DJing. Uh, that's the uh, an Akai uh, MPD, which I don't know how to use yet. That's been not a general way to on the iPad. There's an uh, awesome app called uh, Recasting. Um, so, what is an event feed? Um, I feel it's necessary to uh, to uh, get like the common uh, vocabulary down because if you uh, search for events, you know, on Google, you'll find lots of different you know, meanings of the word. Uh, this is not event-driven programming or uh, we're not talking about uh, Know, scheduled events or anything like that. We're just talking about basically the uh, the news feed on GitHub. You know, it's just the part on the uh, left, just a feed of all the stuff that uh, you know your friends on uh, GitHub are doing. So every time they uh, make any change to a repo or or whatever. Um, so there's this uh, paper called uh, "Feeding Frenzy: Selectively Materializing Users' Event Feeds." Uh, this is by some people at uh, Yahoo Research, and they go through how uh, Yahoo stores their uh, their feeds. Uh, they actually have, you know, they have their uh, Yahoo, uh, I don't even know what's called, uh, their you know, Yahoo uh, RSS thing, where you know they have like millions of people s subscribing to <coughs> millions of uh, blogs and news sources. So they go through and uh, talk about how they do it at Yahoo, which is way more, uh, you know, way larger in scale than uh, GitHub. But there's a lot of good stuff in this paper, and there's a link to it at the end. Um, so one of the things they talk about is uh, consumers and producers uh, in any kind of like uh, you know, feed system. You have, you have uh, consumers uh, you know, subscribing to sources, uh, to producers that produce the events. Um, the interesting thing, though, is um, the different apps you know, they use consumers and producers differently. So in a uh, you know, RSS feed aggregation service, you know, the uh, producers and consumers are two totally different entities. And then with something like uh, Twitter, where you have followers, you know, users following each other, it's kind of like the same thing. Like users can follow, you know, users are both consumers and producers. So that's kind of how GitHub works. You know, um, every, you know, every user is the, uh, Consumer and then the repos that they push to are producers, and uh, we also have uh, multiple feeds that you have access to. You know, there's the uh, user, uh, like your personal actor feed, which is like all the stuff that you specifically, all the actions that you did personally, and then there's the feed of all the stuff that you're watching, and then we have other feeds for uh, organizations. So, uh, you know, anytime someone does something in the uh, GitHub organization, I, I see it in, in a special feed that has all the other stuff, you know, taken out. And uh, that paper, Feeding Frenzy, also talks about the concept of uh, push versus pull in, uh, in event feeds. Like, it's, it's a difference in how uh, your event feeds are created. Um, so the first event feed that I wrote in uh, Rails well, it's kind of like this. This is like a really basic active record example where I have some event model. It wasn't called events, but um, some kind of like, I think it was like activity log. And there were plugins for it back then, like uh, access audited, things like that. And then you had some kind of, uh, you know, your producer, you know, in, in our case, at GitHub is repository, but it's, you know, something like a project or whatever. And in some callbacks, and after save callback, we just create a record. You know, it's really easy. You know, you create one record per event. It's all normalized in my database. It's perfect. And then we had some like crazy query like this to uh, get someone's uh, events. Um, so you can imagine if you built uh, permission systems, if you have events and repositories, and you have some like membership table that connects the users to the memberships, and then we do this like crazy nested join uh, to get all the events for all of the repositories that I'm that I'm in. So it's really easy to, to write the event. It's, it's not much code, but then to read it, your database has to do a lot of work. And uh, this is 
so it's building the event feed on the fly. This is this is a poll. You're you're asking uh, you know, the event feed is being built like on demand as soon as I access it. So th this works on small scale event feeds, but uh, when I talked to Chris when he rolled out event feeds at GitHub, they didn't do this at all because it falls down really fast. So at GitHub, this is, we do more of like a push um, architecture where you know we create the event once and then we basically you know pre-build everyone's feed. So uh, you know we create the event in Active Record or you know, whatever, and then uh, loop through each of the followers. And then we uh, create basically another uh, event in Active Record, which I misspelled. Um, so the difference in the, the two events, the first one only has the actor field um, filled out, and then the uh, second one has the user field, and this is the, uh, the person that is watching the event. So it's a really simple database layout. And the nice thing is that events table only has a few indexes on it, on like actor and the uh, and a user. Um, but uh, <laughs> that runs into uh, other issues. So this is Ashton Kutcher. He's got like six million followers on Twitter. And every time he does something, it's basically, you know, Twitter has to update six million feeds, which is insane. Um, and then, you know, this is this, um, you know, uh, Charlie Sheen had the same, same thing where he signed on. He, like one day, it had like a million followers, which is just crazy. Um, <laughs> luckily, uh, I don't know if this is Ashton Kutcher's real account on GitHub. It's the same, it's the same name, but he uh, doesn't have the same following. Thank God. So uh, on GitHub, we have a whole other problem. We have the uh, John Resig Rails problem. So uh, John Resig, you know, the creator of the jQuery, uh, the awesome JavaScript framework. He has the most followers of any user on GitHub, and uh, Rails has the most watchers. So if you used to uh, push, you know, do something on Rails, it would just, you know, GitHub would be creating, you know, like 10,000 events or something. Still on a very low scale compared to Twitter, but you know, for us, it's a lot. Um, so the uh, the push architecture, it, it kind of falls down because it it, um, it results in like a huge increase of data. So this is a, a quote from the uh, Feeding Frenzy paper talking about uh, Dig when they moved to Cassandra. And they basically did the same thing where they, they take their uh, you know, their normalized database and they explode out into a Cassandra database and it goes from like you know tens of gigs to terabytes, which you know, that's that's a huge jump. Um, at, at GitHub, it's not that intense. I think I think our our database our event database is somewhere in the hundreds of gigabytes. So it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of data. Um, and to keep up with the load, when you have people with thousands of followers, and people land repos with thousands of followers, we use this plugin called uh, AR Extensions. It basically uh, lets you uh, do bulk inserts with MySQL. So this is like, a, this is a standard insert statement, and then you just basically pass in multiple values. So, uh, you know, when we uh, figure out all the followers that a user or a repo has, we just build up this, these uh, you know, big queries and send them off to, uh, to the database. Instead of saying a thousand, we might send you know, like a uh, like hundred or something. Also, when uh, when the uh, GitHub event feed was getting popular, we uh, well, they, they started adding uh, more caching to it. We just memcache everything. Basically. So the whole feed, everyone's feed is cached, and then each individual item is cached. And the nice thing about that is uh, a lot of people will see the same item. So we cache it once in memcache, and then when it's building everyone's actual feeds, it's, uh, it, it can reuse that same cache. And right now we have, we, we recently upgraded our memory and our servers, and our uh, memcache servers, to, uh, I don't even know, like hundreds of gigabytes. And we haven't seen one memcache eviction in, in, in a month, so it's pretty awesome. Just everything is in memory. Um, we also uh, reworked the way our templates were rendered. So this is uh, actual code from one of the uh, simpler templates, and it's like this nasty ERB 
Um, you kind of look at it and you're like, I don't really know what that says. You have to like parse the ruby in your head. Um, and uh, it also uses the uh, payload with which each event. So, uh, you know, we used to store like, uh, for each event there's like custom payloads. So for a follower event, we store the target, which is the person that you followed. And we used to store just the ID. So then back to the uh, template, you know, we, there's a few spots where we're using event.target up there. Uh, so we have to load the target for each each time this event is rendered, which is why we want to uh, pre-cache it. So the uh, template rendering gets pre-cached as soon as the event model is created, and it gets rendered outside of Rails, just you know, just in a uh, Ruby job. So I changed that all to well. First, I denormalize the uh, payload hash, so we store everything that we need to render the template. Uh, the nice thing about this is your template, you know, the event data doesn't change as uh, as the uh, the uh, targets change. So if you follow a user and they change their name, or you know, they create more public repos, it doesn't you know invalidate the caches of all the other events. You know, when that event happened, you know, this person was named this. He had this many repos. So we like to uh, just stuff it all in uh, the event record. Also makes it a lot faster to uh, render. We don't have to do any uh, database hits. You know, some of the events have uh, multiple related uh, records, and uh, some of them have to make uh, git calls and stuff like that. So we like to uh, cache it when we can. <coughs> then I changed the uh, template, template into a mustache. So we look at this, and it's much more readable. And uh, there's no logic here at all. We just have basically property names. Um, and the other nice thing about this too is we have all these mustache views for each event that I can test in Ruby. I don't have to uh, scrape HTML to make sure everything works. I can just hit each method and, and then and prove the uh, tests around our events a lot. I also sped up the uh, rendering. We use this like hacked uh, ERB. Well, the ERB itself was a hack. The way we were rendering it inside the model was kind of weird, and it wasn't, uh, it was kind of slow. It wasn't uh, storing, it wasn't caching the uh, compiled ERB template. So Mustache does, handles all that, and uh, it worked pretty well. And uh, Stratocaster is my answer to the uh, data explosion problem. Um, so here's uh, Prince <coughs> talking out. Um, I, I did a lot of reading on events and uh, how to store them, and uh, I, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, come up with a simple, uh, you know, simple library that we could basically move off of our existing event infrastructure to something new, and uh, that became Stratocaster. So the first adapter for Stratocaster that I wrote was in Redis. Uh, I built Stratocaster to work with uh, basically any adapter. I just find a simple API. Uh, Redis was the first one that I implemented. Um, if you haven't used Redis, it's this awesome in-memory database that has, uh, well, it's an in-memory database with persistence. And it has uh, d you know, data structures, you know, like arrays and sets and stuff, which is pretty awesome. It's uh, very natural to uh, move over from like uh, simple like in-memory Ruby code to, uh, to Redis code, because you're just like adding stuff to arrays and uh, adding stuff to hashes and stuff like that. Um, so instead of storing the event data, like the whole event data, and, and, you know, multiple times for each follower, I decided to just store like, an array of IDs or a set or a list of IDs in Redis. So these uh, these are the uh, commands to uh, add add one event to uh, to a list and uh, pull them back out. L push. Is uh, kind of like uh, well, it's kind of like unshift in uh, Ruby. So when you have, you have a, an array and you just add something to uh, the left or the, the front of the array, and then uh, you know L range is what we use to uh, get back items. So that call right there is getting the uh, first 50 items from the uh, from the list. Um, so with that, we're storing just the IDs of all the repeated events and not not the whole event. And uh, in, in, in the test that I ran, we, we actually ran this in production for about a month. And I, I was running it side by side with the uh, current event system. And I, you know, count how many events are going into Redis and how many are going into the database. And we're saving about, uh, well, 
there's about 10 times more events that go into the database that don't need to go. So moving over to this, we'll save like a tenth of our, we'll, we'll reduce the uh, event table size to a tenth of what it is currently, which is pretty awesome. Um, so in the uh, real world test, the, uh, the first one I, I ran was for one week, created roughly 18 million rows. Uh, this is before Redis actually. Um, I, I ran the test with, uh, with another adapter that dumped everything in MySQL. And uh, so we got about 18 million rows. And then I took that data and uh, I decided to shove it into Redis to see how Redis performed with it. So at, at the time, Redis 2.0 was the uh, latest. And it took about 1.2 gigs in memory, which, which is about, um, it's about how much uh, MySQL took to sort on disk. It's about uh, one gig on disk. Uh, Redis is pretty compact. Uh, I think on disk it was, uh, it was about 80 megs, and then once you load into memory, it blows up to uh, 1.2 gigs because you know in memory Redis you know has all this uh, overhead with the uh, you, know, ha you know keeping the objects in memory and uh, ready to be accessed. Um, at the time, uh, Redis 2.2 was in beta, and I ran it through that, and it was, the in-memory footprint was just 200 megs. Um, so what happened there was uh, they added some crazy optimizations to Redis 2.2, so if you're storing uh, lists of numbers, which I, you know, that's exactly what I was doing, that uh, they, the, um, the way they encode the data in memory is uh, a lot more efficient. I don't really understand how it works, but I'm be happy with the uh, reduction in the uh, memory footprint. Um, so, th yeah, so the thing is, um, I had to uh, define my data model. I had to look at what exactly the event, the uh, event feed needed. So, I, you know, one portion of that was creating the event in some database that I can access by ID. Um, so, for now, we're using MySQL just because we have that set up when we use it. And, you know, there's something I thought about trying other databases or like Postgres or Mongo or whatever. It's just we have MySQL, you know, it's in our servers. You know, our our uh, admin guys, you know, have all their stuff set up to use it. So that that was an easy thing to uh, to start with. Um, and then uh, for the feeds. Uh, this is this is uh, some uh, the current Ruby API for Stratocaster. It's, it's still a little weird. Uh, they uh, haven't released it yet. It's it's on GitHub if you know where to look. It's hidden in a toy project that I wrote with no tests to uh, kind of hide it from uh, Rubyists. But um, so basically, we uh, we define what timelines that we want to store, and then uh, we have this uh, this key format me uh, method that takes it that. You know, yields a block every time we uh, give Stratocaster a message, an event, and then uh, we try and build the uh, the uh, Redis uh, list key based on the you know, the repository ID. Um, and then this is one for the uh, users. So um, the events, you know, we're assuming the event knows like how to it. You know, the event gives us the uh, the followers, and then we take those users and we Build, uh, you know, we build a bunch of uh, Redis keys for their uh, their timelines, um, and then uh, all right, here's some uh, here's the code we actually use to store it in, in uh, Stratocaster. So we create our event like normal in Active Record or whatever. I, I made Stratocaster basically pretty uh, you know pretty uh, agnostic, you know, database agnostic. So we can my my goal was to support active models. So as long as you have like an ID and some other simple things that all active model things will use that uh, it'll work. So I, it works um, in Active Record, it works in a toy store, which is uh, this awesome uh, active model. Uh, it's this awesome model for uh, key value stores using the active model, using the active model API. Uh, so we create a Stratocaster instance and pass in the timelines that, uh, you know, the, the possible timeline definitions and then and uh, Strat <coughs> the Stratocaster receives the event, and it goes through those previous uh, timeline classes and spits out the timelines that it found. And then also insert that event to those timelines. 
Um, the nice thing about this is we can be a lot more flexible with what kind of timelines that we use. Uh, with the uh, database setup, I had to, you know, we have to index everything in MySQL, and then changing those indexes, you know, takes, you know, when you have something like a billion rows in your database, it takes forever. So just kind of just don't touch it. Um, with this, we can decide, hey, you know, I want to do a, you know, a feed for um, the network view, the network view of a repo, and I can just add another Stratocaster timeline object, and it'll start being populated. Uh, so this is like the internals of what the uh, adapters see. So basically they see uh, like <coughs> the uh, timeline object passes off to the adapters and they see basically like here's a key and the event and I want you uh, to store it. And uh, then the adapter, you know, this, this is a uh, Redis adapter. Um, oh, then that knows, you know, that, that has the actual Redis code to uh, push it to a list and all that. So why, why did I build it like this? Um, basically, I wanted to, uh, I, I, when I defined my data model, it, it uh, brought out some simple requirements that can fit to multiple data stores. Uh, MySQL and Redis were really easy to pick just because we already had those in our infrastructure. And, uh, you know, if we get, if we get the, uh, you know, once we get the feed moved over to this full time, then, uh, you know, then we can look at other implementations and other more experimental data stores at some point. Um, so one of the nice things about the, uh, the data model on uh, GitHub is there's no like real historical view, so I don't have to worry about storing like all of your events for all time and making them easily accessible. So uh, uh, so Redis works well because we can trim the uh, lists to uh, you know like 300 items, which is more than enough for most feeds, and uh, that keeps the memory footprint low. We're not storing like all of the event data for all time; we're just storing like, the most recent you know, events. Also, it's helpful to limit the scope of Stratocaster. Like when we we're building this, we we're thinking, "Oh, it'd be cool if we could do all this other stuff. You know, we could build in all this other." Uh, um, event uh, timeline stuff like uh, machine learning and uh, you know, things like that. And uh, limiting, the, limiting the scope just meant uh, we could build out Stratocaster really fast and, uh, and uh, you know, just keep it simple. It has no dependencies. It's, you, know, you can just get in there and you know exactly what's, what's going on. Um, and this lets you iterate really fast. Um, I've written Stratocaster uh, four times now in and uh, Node.js, so just every time I, I write it and uh, it, it works out, and I'm like, I don't, you know, after a couple weeks, I just, I don't like it anymore, and I just rewrite it. Uh, the uh, the most recent rewrite it came out after uh, Toy Store came out. I saw Toy Store how they had the uh, the adapters for the uh, key value stores, and I really like that idea. It's basically doing half of what Stratocaster was doing anyway, so I rewrote Stratocaster a third time. Well, fourth time, and uh, took that part out, and it, just, it cut the uh, complexity down in the faster a lot. Uh, so here's some uh, references. I'll, I'll be posting these slides uh, on, on Twitter soon, uh, or, like later today, probably. So these are some of the blog posts and uh, you know, white papers. There's the, uh, the Cassandra one. That's uh, that's from Dig. That um, that's talking about how they. Uh, move to a Cassandra for their, uh, well, they didn't call it a timeline. That's that's why it's hard to like find these articles because everyone calls, everyone's solving similar problems, but they call them fully different things. Uh, the friend feed one, that's, um, has nothing to do with timelines necessarily, but it's really cool look, really interesting way that they're building their own secondary indexes in MySQL for their, you know, giant tables. Um, and this uh, last one, using Rianca Yammer, this was a talk I saw uh, just the other, um, just Tuesday, uh, by uh, Coda Hale, and it kind of blew my mind. He's doing something similar, a lot more advanced than, uh, than what we're doing on the uh, GitHub event feed, and uh, using Rioc, which is this awesome uh, distributed database, 
and it's just like a totally different way of looking at uh, data stores. So I highly re recommend checking that out. And, uh, and uh, questions? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the best image of ever. I didn't make this one, though, unfortunately. Questions? Lots and lots of practice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Aaron asked, uh, oh, I got so good at making anime GIFs. Lots and lots of practice. It was this, uh, the art of anime GIFs that almost died. And this is all about YouTube and whatever. And then uh, Campfire brought it all back. You can just drop images in uh, Campfire chat. And uh, now we're all obsessed with anime GIFs. Uh, oh, sorry. Are you planning to release Stratocaster? Um, I, I think so. It's. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, he asked if um, I'm planning to release Stratocaster. Um, I think so. I want to get the API to where I like it, and I want to make sure it actually does what I, what I you know, that it actually works well. And you know, so I've been using it, but I want to like take it through its paces. Um, it's also like not really much code. I imagine people look at it and like, well, that's it. Um, so um, that was my question. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I can. Um, I have time. I can. So this is all of the stars. Uh, this is uh, this is the hidden project on GitHub, which now you can all find. And it has Stratocaster, like the uh, current version, as of about a week ago in in Vendor. Um, so all of the stars is a simple app that I wrote to uh, basically catalog the stars from. Uh, from different apps like uh, Twitter, you know, Twitter has favorites. Campfire has stars. Um, you know, I think Instagram has likes, and I just want to aggregate aggregate all of that. And um, I'm storing that in React, which really has nothing to do with uh, with this talk. But then, um, as I was finishing up this talk, I decided, you know, I, I want to have some example that I can show. So this here are a couple uh, Stratocaster feeds that operate on uh, tweets, on uh, favorites. So th this one is using the uh, Twitter uh, Ruby extraction library that extracts out uh, usernames, uh, mentions, and hashtags, <coughs> and building up. Um, so th the key is uh, basically all the stars are scoped by cluster ID, and it builds a key with a cluster ID, hashtag, and then uh, and an actual hashtag. And then we have a screen name one that pulls out all the uh, mentions, and then, uh, and then when I actually, you see that? Okay, so we'll just create a new object then. Okay, so here's my uh, my tweet. Object and S is a uh, S uh, star is oh, star is a uh, toy store object. So so this this log data this is a storing it in uh, React you know, key value store and then uh, build up the uh, get my Stratocaster instance. 
call receive on that, that star I just wrote. And it blows up. Let's connect to Redis. All right, so you need Redis from me. Let's try it again. And there we go. So we, we have our all the timelines that it built up. So it, um, so all the stars have a timeline for each each type. So I can I can look at uh, so I, I can look at all the uh, the stars by type, and then it created timelines for you know the hashtag Ruby on Ales and uh, the screen name, and then I can create uh, I can query the Stratocaster by uh, Pass in, you know, the, uh, the the values needed to uh, build that string. So test and then techno mean. Um, so that's our feed, and then uh, and then if I want to get the first page, I just call page on it, and there's my star ID. So once I get a bunch of star IDs, then I can. Uh, So once I have a list of start of, uh, <coughs> of event IDs, and I can create instances like that and uh, render, you know, show them, you know, render them on the uh, on web page. Uh, that's, that's basically it. I'm, I'm not at all happy with the uh, API for it, like creating these, uh, these, uh, these uh, timeline instances. Uh, it's a little rough, but we'll get there. Uh, anything else? Can we go back to the angry? Okay. Yeah, he's, uh, he's just some, some wrestler. I forget who he is. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, uh, that's it. Thank you. I have one question oh. of these of these data stores, like um, you know the ones that you've been talking about. Are there any that um, that kind of stick out to you as particularly promising, or that you particularly like, um, or are they all kind of uh, kind of the same? Uh, they're they're all similar. Um, yeah. So Redis, I really like. Redis is very different from all the others. Uh, okay. Redis is very stable and fast. It's in memory, so it's super fast. Uh, Reoc is a really good one. That's it's a key value store. It doesn't really have any concept of lists and timelines and stuff. Okay. And, uh, so Redis is in memory. I don't know how you guys use it operationally with actually syncing to disk. But do you still use MySQL as the primary store for individual events and just Redis for the timelines? Uh, yeah, so we asked uh, about Redis. Redis is an in-memory database, so it's not the best store for like the, the sole source of your data. So we asked if we use MySQL as the, the, you know, the, the main store for the events. And yeah, we, we store the events in MySQL, you know, and then just the IDs in Redis. Redis is super stable though, and you can, you can tweak how often it flushes the disk. I think by default it flushes every minute, and you know, obviously you can tweak that. Do you, you do that instead of the append file? Uh, I, yeah, I think so. 